Just kidding. About most of it. Today we are going to talk about those little shouting tree aliens we know as cicadas, and why we're getting tips from them on everything from military communication devices to antibacterial surfaces. I'd probably get more subscribers if I made more videos like this, though. <laughs> are a family of rather large insects that make up about 3,000 species around the world. While we tend to think of them as flying, tree-loving creatures, cicadas actually spend most of their lives, up to 17 years, underground. When they become adults, they have a mere few weeks above ground at the end of their lives where they come out to mate. Brown chicken, brown cow. Their young then go back into the ground and stay there until they too have a chance to grow up, mate, and, well, some areas have various generations of cicadas staggered so that one emerges every year. But in parts of the U.S., we also have periodical cicadas, species that come out of the ground all at once every 13 or 17 years. Evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould theorized that emerging at those time intervals provides protection for the cicadas. 13 and 17 are prime numbers, meaning that predators with shorter population cycles, anywhere from 2 to 6 years, won't be synchronized with the emergence of these periodical cicadas. On these mathematically advantageous years, these summer screamers emerge in large numbers as nymphs. Then, in an event straight out of an alien horror movie, they break open their outer shell, climb out of it all soft and white with red eyes, and then finally get to use those wings to ascend to the trees in search of a mate, leaving the discarded shell behind. Fun fact! You can use the shells to make tiny, frightening piñatas to sell on Etsy. Or traumatize your siblings with them. Not that I ever did that. Finally, in an attempt to lock down the most important swipe right of their rapidly shortening lives, they begin to croon a familiar song that makes you wonder when the obnoxiously loud neighbors moved in. If your neighbors happen to be a coordinated chorus of drunken yodlers. If these new, flying neighbors seem to be inconceivably louder than whatever it is your human neighbors are always doing with all their power tools, it's because they are. Some species can reach up to nearly 109 decibels at close range, well above the level where it can damage your hearing. Their sound comes from a special body part called timbles on either side of their body under their wings. It's a flexible membrane lined with tiny ribs, which buckles and unbuckles quickly back and forth to make a chirping noise. It's like flexing this straw back and forth. If the straw were a body part, you could flex 400 times per second to make into a musical instrument. The sound wave from each side meet in constructive interference. So this loud peak from the right meets this loud peak from the left, cranking the volume up well beyond what each timbre could do on its own. Then the hollow body of the cicada makes the perfect acoustic environment to amplify the sound even more. The system works so well that the U.S. Navy has been studying cicada's chirping mechanism to develop small, energy-efficient devices to communicate over long distances. They probably won't be developed from bendy straws, though. What's even more incredible than their ability to give Jamie Lee Curtis a run for her money is their defense mechanism against harmful microbes. Scientists have found cicadas to have antibacterial properties, thanks to a texture featuring nanopillars, blunt, spiky structures arranged in an organized fashion over the wings. When bacteria come in contact with the nanopillars, it's thought to be like a balloon sitting on top of a bed of dull nails. Or if you don't have dull nails lying around, wooden shish kebab skewers. Rather than bursting on contact, bacteria are sheared open with movement. Or they simply stretch and sag between the pillars until they rupture under their own weight. That's metal, dude. Very recent studies have suggested that the chemical makeup of the nanopillars also contributes to their antibacterial properties. Scientists are studying ways to apply these techniques to developing man-made antibacterial surfaces, which may even help to combat the antibiotic resistance problem. Now here I thought cicadas were just bonkers-looking bugs that come out in biblical proportions once every decade and a half. Well, that they may be a little thirsty. But there's so much more than that. They're clever sound engineers, cunning mathematicians, Maybe a little bit patriotic? And those booby-trapped wings are the kind of thing that kid from home alone could only dream about. Do I still think of them as shouting tree aliens creeping in my yard for a few weeks every summer? Yes, I do. But respectable, clever, 
And yeah, pretty cool tree aliens. Thank you for joining me today to go down an internet rabbit hole on antibacterial nanopillars, the acoustics of cicada sounds, or anything else we talked about today. Check out the links below. <laughs>